Okay, I've been teaching A&P for about six years now, and every single semester, every time we talk about muscles, every time we talk about electrolytes, somebody asks me, why does eating bananas prevent muscle cramps? Or why did my track coach tell me to drink pickle juice and that makes muscle cramping go away? Or me personally, I've found that drinking milk makes cramping go away. If you wake up funny and you've got that cramp in your neck, drinking some milk will usually make sure that that's gone by the end of the day. Now, it's always been really, really difficult because I've tried to figure that out. And I've got a little background in electrophysiology, so I kind of really want to figure this out. I want to know this answer. And I don't like telling people I don't know. I think I've finally figured it out. And it's fairly complex, and that's why it's so difficult. And I've looked on the web several, several times, enough to actually tell students I think it's a wives' tale because I couldn't find the answer. But again, I think this is finally the answer. The first thing is, is to recognize that potassium and hydrogen exchange across the cell membrane. It might be a little bit more complex than that. It might be just that hydrogen interacts with the sodium potassium ATPase, which is what puts potassium on the inside of the cell or the outside of the cell. But it's probably easier to think about it as just exchange. If potassium has to leave, hydrogen has to go in. In the case of hypokalemia, when there's too little potassium, then potassium on the inside of the cell has to leave in order to balance the loss of potassium outside the cell. Like we said then, hydrogen has to exchange, so it has to go into the cell. So all these hydrogens are going to run into the cell. So over here, we've moved all those hydrogens into the cell, and now we've got something called alkalosis. The effect of alkalosis has to be understood in terms of something called albumin. Albumin is a protein that floats around in the blood, and one of the main things it does is it provides osmotic pressure to get fluid back into capillaries. So if you have this large protein with these charges on it, then when it floats through the capillaries, it's going to draw water towards it just by osmosis, which means it's going to draw fluid back into the capillaries that's been pushed out in order to provide nutrition for tissue. But albumin is very negatively charged, and it usually balances those negative charges with hydrogen and calcium. Well, if we've just lost all of our hydrogen because it ran into the cell, then hydrogen is going to come off the albumin. That means there's going to be more room for calcium, so calcium is going to jump onto the albumin, and now we've got hypocalcemia. We've got too low of calcium. Now it's a little hard then to move ahead and go, well, how does too little calcium actually make muscle hyperexcitable? Because we know that calcium causes muscle to contract, so we'd figure that less calcium would mean this muscle does not want to contract, when in fact cramping is overexcitability or too much contraction. Here's where my background in electrophysiology kind of helped, because I used to do patch clamping, and that's where you measure the electrical current across the cell membrane. And we always used to find that if we didn't have our calcium right, if something was weird, it might mean that we mixed up our solutions with not enough calcium or not the right amount of calcium. And electrophysiologists have known this for 15, 20 years, probably much longer. The best theory that they've ever been able to come up with is that there's these proteins on the outside of the cell that have a negative charge. And calcium's the best ion to get in there and balance out those negative charges. Sodium's technically smaller, but it's got a more positive charge, and so it attracts more water shells. So it actually is a bigger molecule once you consider the water. Calcium is small enough to get in there, shed its water shell, and balance out those negative charges. If you've got less calcium, then it can't balance out those negative charges, which means you've got these small negative charges on the outside of the cell balancing the normally negative charge inside the cell. So normally a cell has a huge negative voltage, around minus 70 millivolt, and the outside tends to be more positive. But if you have these unbalanced negative charges, the effect is to make the inside of the cell less negative. If you remember your action potentials, or you know your action potentials, what happens in an action potential to cause a muscle to contract is you've got to get from minus 70 millivolts up to minus 55 millivolts generally to cause that muscle to contract. Well, if we're less negative, less than negative 70, then we're closer to that threshold, which means this cell is more excitable. So the muscle is more likely to contract and more likely to cramp then. So what's the take-home message? Then how are these people all right? Because technically, if you eat bananas, they're high in potassium, and that cures the hypokalemia, and that stops it right then, so you don't progress on. Or you could drink pickle juice, which is acidic, and that cuts us off here. So make sure there's enough hydrogen to not kick the calcium off the albumin. Or you can drink milk, increase your calcium. That also will make sure that you don't get this hypocalcemic overexcitation. Thank you.